Stalin kept my country, the only one in Europe which is denuded of population, which has a, until recently a shrinking population, while their, pop, their own population has soared. And we have been retained as their servants and their suppliers of soldiers or laborers. This is everybody's In 1916, a group of Republican rebels rose against the British and tried to establish an Ireland run by the Irish. This year, we're celebrating the centenary of that event by funneling most of our arts funding into film productions, books and plays about that rebellion. We've got a case of the money deciding what gets made here, which many would argue doesn't lead to the best possible work getting produced. So the question is, is there any social value to art that's made because the financing is there, rather than because the nation's artists actually have something to say about the topic? As an example, let's look at the RTE drama Rebellion. It's been met with quite a bit of criticism in its short run, but leave issues of quality aside for a minute and ask yourself, what does this miniseries bring to our cinematic landscape that we haven't had before? To give a brief history lesson, The Rising has historically been viewed as the source of modern Irish republicanism, with the proclamation as read by Padraig Pearce outside the General Post Office being its founding document. The idea of the Irish Republic was an all-island nation, where people's religious and personal freedoms were protected, but the reality of Irish independence was a divided island, with the North beholden to the British Crown and the Republic informally beholden to the Vatican. Rebellion didn't aim to address this break between the idealism of the Rising and the reality of the Irish Republic, instead opting to focus on the lives of minor players and the events of the Rising. It may have disappointed some, but works like Rebellion are important all the same for how they tell stories about a nation's identity, particularly if they back a conservative reading of history. If the story inspires other creators to retell the event as they see it, at least it's starting a conversation, it's giving the rising a place in public consciousness that wasn't there before, specifically a cinematic one. The importance of talking about conflicts through art was the focus of the film Waltz with Bashir. The film is an animated documentary in which director Ari Foman interviews those who fought alongside him in the Israeli side of the Lebanon War in 1982. I just can't seem to remember anything from my time in the Lebanon War. The film is propelled by Foreman's attempt to remember what exactly happened during the war and why he can't seem to remember anything about it. He doesn't remember where or why he fought or even what exactly happened when he went into the war zone. Waltz with Bashir ends up being a kind of meta-narrative about how artworks influence the way we remember historical events, even events that we may have been a part of. It took 26 years for the Lebanon war to be a topic Israel could begin to address honestly. But because it took that long, even those who participated in it had no reference point for what happened, so some of them literally forgot everything about it. Compare this with a nation like the US who so relentlessly documents and revisits its history in cinema. The kinds of movies that were made about the Second World War during and shortly after the war were often visions of heroism and sacrifice for a greater cause. But from the perspective of the 90s, America's view of World War II as a basically heroic event was challenged, first by films like Saving Private Ryan and then in the miniseries Band of Brothers. In that series, probably America's greatest document of the US invasion of Europe, and those who actually fought in the war are given the opportunity to speak, to reminisce, to challenge the things they saw in movies about their experience. It showed that there were horrible contradictions, injustices and often complete pandemonium before, during and after the invasion. Later, Oliver Stone made a documentary series where he identified the Russians as the real driving force of the victory against Nazism in Europe. It was to be the Red Army itself that would reverse the course of the war. But it was a steady progress to get to that point. A lot of talking and filming, a lot of reaching out to audiences, encouraging them to think about the way they saw all wars before the US could reach that point. We probably wanted Rebellion to be Ireland's band of brothers, but the problem is we haven't earned it yet. We've only now reached the point the US reached with films like The Best Years of Our Lives made only a year after World War II ended. Films that look at the lives of those unknowns who participated in the conflict but offer no greater context or understanding beyond that. We're too early into documenting our history through cinema at this point to get an honest view of the rising. What's worrying is how far behind we are in other areas as a result. We should be making films about our own society that do what, say, Spotlight is doing for Boston or what The Big Short is doing for the economic crash in the US. 
those are stories that affected us too, but where are our films on those topics? Because without films about corruption in the Catholic Church or shady business practices in this country, we'll forget about them, the way the Israeli soldiers forgot about the Lebanon War. So ask yourself, what are the stories we need to tell? So